I'm Elizabeth, a literary princess. If you are new here, welcome. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in English literature with a focus on Victorian women novelists. And as you might expect, I love to read. Today I have the quarter year crisis tag for you. This was created by Roisin from Roisin's Reading. And I did it last year and possibly the year before, but I don't actually remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Definitely last year though. <laughs> and so as with the mid-year book freak out tag and the um, end of the year book tag, I like to do this every year. So there are nine questions. Let's jump in. Question number one is how many books have you read so far? And I'm really happy with myself. I've read 23 books. So I'm almost halfway through my goal of 50. So I can't, this really isn't a quarter year crisis tag. I'm not in crisis whatsoever, at least reading wise with other things, who knows? So yeah, 23 books. I also DNF'd one, um, which was Spare by Prince Harry, which I just got to where he was being deployed in Afghanistan and didn't care. So I didn't finish it. So I have finished 23 and I'm really happy with that. Like I said, I'm almost halfway through my goal of 50 and something like 10 books ahead of schedule, 11 books ahead of schedule, according to Goodreads. So pretty good. Question number two, have you already found a book that you think might be a 2024 favorite? If not, what's the best book you've read so far this year? So I am having a fantastic reading year so far. I have read eight five-star reads. So eight of those 23 have been five-star reads. That's amazing. And I have found, actually, I thought I found the top book of the year and then another book came and knocked it off. So right now, my top book of the year is Sister Novelists. The Trailblazing Porter Sisters Who Paved the Way for Austin and the Brontes by Devani Lucer. And I actually just finished this in March. Fantastic work of nonfiction. Absolutely adore it. I right up there with some of my absolute favorite nonfictions like The Brontes by Juliet Barker and Margaret Fuller, A New American Life by Megan Marshall. Right up there with it. I don't know if anything can knock this out of top spot, but I said that about the other book that I'd had in top spot. So, you know. The other book that is now number two is Cecilia by Frances Burney. And I do have a physical copy of it, but I just lent it to a friend of mine. So this was a big influence on Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. The title, the title of it actually comes from a quote, most likely, and this is just an amazing classic. It's a thousand pages and it doesn't feel a thousand pages. It is just so good. So yeah, I feel like every other book is gonna have a really hard time bumping these two out of the top two slots, but you never know. We're only a quarter of the way through the year. Anything could happen. Question number three, any one star books and or least favorite book of the year? There are no one star reads this year. I don't even have any two star reads either. I suppose if I had to say a least favorite of the year, it would be The Night Dance by Suzanne Wen, which I actually just had a whole video about. Um, I originally gave this three stars, but as I was reading or th as I was thinking back while literally talking through it for my video, I realized no, this is more of a two and a half. So not terrible. I still really enjoyed aspects of it, but it had some things that I didn't like. But no one star reads. I'm hoping for no one star reads for the whole year. But again, we'll see. Question number four, most read genre so far. So the top genre that I have right now is fantasy with seven books in it. And then coming in second with six books is classics. So I think that's pretty normal. Usually classics come out on top for me. Um, I believe last year fantasy was second place. So it seems like these two are going to be kind of going back and forth. Um, I have also read four works of nonfiction and four works of young adult fiction. 
Question number five, a book that surprised you. And this was for my George Eliot project. And no, it was not my nemesis Middlemarch. <gasps> um, this was Felix Holt. I, look, I never thought in a million years I was gonna like this book. It's like, it's always like considered George Eliot's political novel. And it is, but I'm like, I'm not it. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> However, I really enjoyed this. I liked the characters a lot. I thought the pacing was some of Eliot's best pacing in any of her works. This and Romola are like top tier pacing and the rest are terrible and meandering. Even Silas Marner, which is super short. And I really liked um, the character of Esther Leon. I liked her character arc. I loved the just like the intricacies of inheritance that this book was dealing with. I thought it was fascinating. I was completely surprised. Like when, if you go back to earlier videos before I had read this, it's always me being like, yeah, I have to read Felix Hull. Maybe I'll like it. No, I really, really liked it. It was so good. I was very surprised in a good way. Question number six, a book that's come out in 2024 already that you want to read but haven't yet. And this would be The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. This is her second book in the Stolen Air duology. So second, second and final book in the Stolen Air duology, which itself is a continuation of the Folk of the Air trilogy. I read the first one when it came out last year and loved it. And I really want to read The Prisoner's Throne. It came out right at the beginning of March. I have not gotten a copy yet. I might end up buying it for myself at some point in the next few months, or I might wait until my birthday. We'll see what happens. My birthday is in August, but I will be getting to it this year because I want to see how this story of Prince Oak and, oh my God, what is her name? Ren. I want to see how their story ends. Question number eight, one goal that you made that you're succeeding at? Well, obviously I'm very much succeeding at my goal of getting to 50 books this year, but I kind of knew that. Another goal that I made is to use my public library more and specifically to get a book out of there every month, at least. I've already gotten five books out of the library and we only just finished March. So I am doing more than one library book a month. I'm actually reading another one right now. So we'll be six soon. So I'm definitely succeeding at this and I'm loving it. I love that I can just pick up books and not have to pay for them. <laughs> it's free. It's great. But also like if I'm not sure about a book, I can be like, oh, well, you know, get it out of the library. I love supporting my local library and they just, they have a really good selection and the library is just very pretty and I, I love them and I am happy that I am supporting them. Question number eight, one goal you made that you need to focus on. So I made a goal to read um, 10 works of Victorian literature that were not rereads. And then also two works by each of my four dissertation authors who are all Victorian. So that is a total of 18 Victorian books that I want to have read that are not rereads. Um, I have read one book that was not by a dissertation author. So that is one out of 10 for the Victorian literature category. And then I have read one book by a dissertation author. So that is one out of eight in the dissertation author category. And I feel like I need to get my ass in gear. Given I have read two other works of Victorian literature because I've reread Middle March by George Eliot and Salem Chapel by Margaret Oliphant, but those go into my rereading category, which I wanted to reread three books and I've already reread re two. So. I'm too great with the rereads. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really need to crack down on my Victorian literature or the new to me Victorian literature and like get some of that going. Like, come on. 
It's like, this is your career, girl. Get to it. Question number nine is new to you booktubers, bookstagrammers, or book talkers for 2024 that you would recommend. So I have a terrible memory and have a really hard time remembering when I started following people's channels. So I have three that I'm going to mention. Two of them I know because I just recently followed them. And then the other, I'm not sure. I might have followed her at the end of last year, but we're counting it. So first off, for the, one of the ones who I know I just started following is the mild rumpus who first of all, is hilarious. <laughs> um, second of all, has an adorable dog named Ace. He's a Frenchie and I love him and I would die for him. Yes, I would die for your dog. <laughs> I would die for pretty much everybody's dogs and cats here on BookTube. But I am really enjoying watching his weekly reading vlogs. He lives in New York City in an apartment that he calls the House of Flimsy. And he has a really varied reading taste. It's pretty different from mine, but I just really enjoy the way he talks about books and seeing what he gets up to and seeing Ace, of course. Ace is definitely an added bonus. So highly recommend his channel. I've been enjoying very much. The other um, booktuber who I definitely started following this year is new to me, but not new to booktube. And this is Kim at Middle of the Book March. I found Kim because she actually found me first through my George Eliot project. She is a very big fan of George Eliot, as you might be able to tell from her channel title. <laughs> and I've been very much enjoying her videos as well. She ha also has like my bookish week and I have been greatly enjoying her channel. And the final booktuber who I might have started following at the end of last year, I don't remember. Um, but this is Steph Morgan. And I have really been enjoying her videos as well. She is very into gothic literature um, and fairy tales. I know she read Angela Carter's The Bloody Chamber recently. She read um, Ava Reed's Juniper and Thorn, which I might have been how I found her. I don't remember but I have greatly enjoyed her videos. She also is a writer herself and recently had a video on her writing process, which was super fun. So really enjoying all three of these booktubers. Highly recommend checking them out if you are not already following them. So that is my quarter year crisis book tag. Not so much of a crisis. Um, I suppose I will tag the three booktubers who I just talked about, The Mild Rumpus, Kim from Middle of the Book March, and Steph Morgan, if they would like to do this tag. If not, no worries. I would love to know your answers to these questions down in the comments below. How many books have you been reading? What are your best and worst so far? Are you making your bookish goals? If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my bookish content. It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.